Hello, this is Kevin Barefoot with Winthrop Intelligence. We appreciate you joining today's webinar, uh, specifically for Division II administrators today, where we're going to be talking about opportunities to increase revenue uh, and cut costs, create efficiency uh, with the WinAD database. We often get inquiries from folks who are interested in learning more about what WinAD is, how their peers are using it, and uh, what opportunities there may be to leverage better information within your own department and so this webinar today will be a great opportunity to explore all of those different things uh, in terms of the uh, you know as in terms of the purpose of the webinar today again we want to explore opportunities for D2 programs to, to use 180 to increase revenue and cut costs the attendees today a uh, great mix of division two administrators uh, we have some current clients in the webinar today who I think are probably going to be learning more about the system we have some some folks that we're not working with today and obviously this is a great opportunity for, for you all to learn uh, more about the WinAD database as well what we're going to do is review each of the different data sets that WinAD offers we'll provide examples of how D2 programs are using the information that WinAD offers to create efficiency, uh, to increase revenue, gain a competitive advantage, make the most informed decisions. Before we get started, I want to just give you kind of a quick preview of, of what you're going to see today. Each of the tiles on the screen here represent a data set that WinAD offers. You can see top left, we got 8,000 coaches. Uh, in Division Two, head and assistants in every men's and women's sport. That includes, uh, you know, from football to fencing. It also includes support staff, so folks like trainers, strength and conditioning, video coordinators. Uh, you got YouTube videos. You got guarantee game contracts, financial report data. You know, vendor contracts, administrator profiles, as well as some custom benchmarking tools that we'll, that we'll take you through today as well. Uh, the 30 second background, if you're unfamiliar with our company, the 30 second background is we, we launched a company in 2009 with a simple mission of giving ADs the best information to be able to make the best decisions. And we created a prototype really just based on AD feedback. We went out and talked with Division 1 and Division 2 ADs and just said, where do you need better information? Where are you getting it now? And, and, and we just learned that there, that there weren't a lot of great sources of information out there for Division 1 and Division 2 ADs. And we felt like we could build a better mousetrap. Uh, we took the feedback of, of dozens of ADs, built a prototype. We launched it in 2009. And ever since then, uh, we have been expanding it, augmenting it to include more of the information that administrators need to where, you know, now it's really uh, a comprehensive set of information for, for daily operations of your department, strategic planning, contract negotiation, benchmarking, and, and, and we'll take a look at all those examples uh, today in, in the webinar. So I'm going to pull over my screen now so we can take a look at this. And... The first thing I want to point out, I'm going to increase the size of this a little bit. The, fir the first thing I want to point out is just that, that, that the navigation at the top of the screen, very intuitive, very easy. It allows you to, to essentially just navigate back and forth between the data that you want to review. So, so we're going to start here in guarantees, but you'll also note that we have administrator salaries, NCAA financial data, the vendors, athletic department profiles, obviously coaches. But you know this webinar is about how you increase revenue and how you cut costs. So this is a great place for us to start. The Guarantee Games database contains uh, Guarantee Game contracts for men's basketball, women's basketball, and football for Division II programs, both when a D2 school is hosting another D2 school or a Division I school is hosting a D2 school. And the value proposition here is simple. If you know what everyone else is paying and receiving for guarantee games, you are simply in a better negotiating position uh, to, to negotiate the best deal for your program, whether you're the, the visiting school or the home school. You can so, sh see for each sport, uh, we're going to show you the, uh, the sport, uh, the home school, the away school, the guarantee amount, the year the game's being played. We have you know, football games going out through 2023, uh, any cancellation fee, and a link to the contract. If you see a single contract, we'll note that here. And you know, one of the great things about WinAD is, is simply the fact that you have access uh, to thousands upon thousands of current contracts in all of the major categories that we offer at the top of the screen. And so if you have a single game contract, you'll, you'll be able to click on the contract link and, and see that agreement here. 
Uh, if you go back out to the main guarantee game search page, you'll also see that we have series. So if you have, if you see a series link, you can click on the series link, and we'll show that. In this case, it's a two-game series between Western Carolina and Tusculum, and uh, it just shows you what that series setup is. You have access to the contract, and so you know again, this one in the context of increasing revenue for your department or even cutting costs, uh, it is pretty straightforward. When you have market transparency, you have better negotiating leverage, and you can ultimately maximize revenue from any non-conference scheduling negotiation. You don't have to take anybody's word for it. This data set removes all the guesswork from that. And we have, uh, for navigation purposes, we have easy to use drop-down boxes on the left side of the screen where you can come in here and for example you can choose sports we can do men's basketball women's basketball football let's start with football uh, and for the home school you can be very specific so if you're negotiating against you know Appalachian State you can come in here and you can select App State uh, if you want to see you know a broader market view of what you know Big Ten or maybe mid-american schools are uh, you know providing in terms of guarantee uh, offers you can you can select a conference an entire subdivision or even a division so maybe you want to start broadly and simply look at division one hosting division two in football and you click update and when you do that we'll show you all those games that we have you can sort these columns so when I click on compensation or guarantee amount we're gonna sort high to low and so maybe this is the way you think about using one AD you know you can come in here and you can see you know what's the top of the market look like what schools division one are willing to pay the highest guarantee game amount for for football games against division two programs and so when you know you know maybe in this scenario that when you're gonna go out and you're gonna play a tough non-conference road game against a division one school you wanna maximize revenue and so we can obviously lift the veil on the market if you will here and, and provide you with that type of uh, visibility that you need to to be able to increase uh, scheduling revenue. Uh, maybe you, again, you want to be a little bit more granular. You know, maybe you, maybe you want to look at uh, you know a mid a mid American conference program. What what are mid American schools more specifically paying? And so you just simply enter in mid American. You click update. Uh, you got a couple of football games there. Again, you can choose the sports. Maybe we want to look at basketball games. So let's choose basketball. We'll come down and take a look at that as well. And here's all the basketball games. Uh, you know, for this scenario. Well, let's let's choose the mid American here. Mid-American and click update, and so you know there's all the Mid-American games uh, for basketball hosting, and you can see the range from you know a couple of thousand uh, you know north uh, you know on up. Uh, I was having a conversation recently. I was actually doing a demonstration of, of 1AD for a uh, Division II administrator, and she gave this example where they were negotiating a game with Chicago State, and she her initial inclination was that that, that the that the rate that they were getting offered was fair. She anticipated there wasn't much fluctuation. You know, Chicago State's going to pay what Chicago State pays, which is you know typically a thousand bucks, maybe fifteen hundred dollars. And so, you know, in that type of scheduling scenario, while you're on the phone with the other you know department, with the other athletic uh, administrator, you can just come in and you can you know type in Chicago State as a specific school, uh, and you click update. And let's take out uh, Division Two as the away school because we just want to see every game what Chicago State is hosting men's basketball and click update and then we'll sort high to low and so when you do that you can see that that there's a pretty wide range anywhere from a thousand bucks as this administrator suspected up to three thousand a couple of years back and so again with 180's guarantee games database transparency is the name of the game when you have better data you can make more informed decisions and uh, and you can put your program in a good position to, to maximize revenue I'm going to skip around a little bit today, and let's take a look here at the uh, Division II Vendors Database, because again, the theme of this webinar today is how are we going to help you increase revenue, how are we going to help you cut costs, and, and, and vendors is a, is a great example on this topic. The value proposition, very similar to guarantees. With market transparency comes negotiating leverage, and this database contains, uh, uh, again, you, you have thousands of pages of contracts for Division II vendor deals with third-party uh, vendors and so if we come over here on the left side of the screen 
if you're if you're watching in the webinar today, you're probably already beginning to get familiar with the navigation of WinAD. You have these conference drop downs on the left side. You have the school drop downs on the left side. We're going to display data in the center of the screen, and you can see we're showing in this case the school, the vendor, the start and end date of the deal, when we entered it. So this was entered back in February of this year, and then a concise summary of the deal. And as always with WinAD, a copy of the executed current agreement is a mouse click away. And so here. Here is the SMA deal with Washburn uh, University. And so you have access to the deal there. One of the things I, I kind of forgot to mention in the guarantee games portion about the value of having access to these contracts is that not only can you identify the financial terms, and, the, and it certainly applies to vendors as well, but you can also assess the material terms. So, you know, in the guarantee games example, is the homeschool providing hotel, hotel accommodations? Are they providing transportation to and from the venue? Here in vendors, you know, what type of discounts are, are, are the, is the vendor providing on an apparel deal? It, is the pouring rights provider uh, offering monies for the booster program or for student affairs program. So you can really just see the entire, uh, all of the terms of the deal, all of the relevant language and clauses uh, to educate yourself on the market and uh, to ultimately help yourself maximize negotiating leverage. And if we go over here to the left side, we can sort by deal type. And this really shows you what we offer. So we have apparel, you got concessions, multimedia. Uh, most mostly when we see outsourced ticketing, that's in Division One, but but certainly I, I anticipate it's coming to Division Two. You got pouring rights, you got trademark licensing, and so all those major deals that you're negotiating for your department, or or maybe even thinking about negotiating. I talked to a lot of D2 administrators today who say um, that. You know they don't have an apparel deal right now for all sports, but they want to. They, they don't know where to start. What what should we get? What should we ask for? Uh, they 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 maybe have a pouring rights deal that's administered by the university today, and athletics doesn't get a piece of that pie. Well, how do you go to your board of trustees? How do you go to your VP of finance and convince that person that a pouring rights deal is is going to be a, a better deal if you include athletics? Well, when, the answer is win AD. You can come in here in this example and you can select pouring rights, for example, and you click update. And we're going to show you Division Two pouring rights deals. And you, you know, if, same scenario with concessions. Concessions is another area where uh, you know a lot of times the university will administer that deal. And so you click on concessions and you click update. And you'll see in here over on the deal summary that we're going to show you university agreements. We're going to show you uh, agreements that also include or encompass athletics. And so there's a nice mix of document types to allow you to help help you negotiate on behalf of athletics or even maybe help you negotiate uh, in concert with the university to help ensure that athletics is getting the right piece of the pie for things like pouring or concessions and you know same deal with apparel right you can come in here and click apparel and if you wanted to sort by vendor name you can so if you want to look for Adidas if you want to look for Aramark uh, if you want to look uh, for Sodexo, you certainly can. Just kind of keeping it broad here to show you uh, a view of what WinAD offers. You can also sort by start and end date or uh, you know when the deal was signed. So maybe you want to look at deals that specifically have been signed in the last 24 months. You can certainly do that as well. But in looking at apparel deals, you, know, you click update and there are the apparel deals. So as you think about return on investment, as you think about you know, how can your department maximize uh, and increase incremental revenue year over year. This is a great example. And I'll, and I'll tell you, you know, here's a, an example of how some clients are using this data to their benefit, uh, you know, in, in, in specifically in pouring rights negotiations. Typical renewal language in a pouring rights contract is at the mutual agreement of both parties. So both parties agree to renew and you extend the term for three to five years. One of the things that, that we've started to see in pouring rights deals and our clients are beginning to notice as well is that pouring rights renewal language is beginning to evolve such that exercising the renewal option is at the sole discretion of the institution and upon exercising that option the vendor agrees to pay X in a, a re-signing bonus uh, and so 
you may never have any plans to, to not re-sign with Coke or not re-sign with Pepsi once they are your partner, but they don't know that. Uh, and so if if you know that this type of contract language exists, that's just one example of many that you can pluck out uh, of, of contracts when you have this easy access to them. Uh, but, but to the extent that you can negotiate a re-signing bonus in your deal, it's found money. You know, and, and so you, you know, we're looking at a, a screen here where you can see an Adidas deal. And so uh, here you, you see things like 35% discount on footwear, 40% discount on, a, on, a, on apparel and accessories. And, and just by bouncing back out to the main, main page here, uh, you, know, you can see on this screen you know, deals where you, you, know, you can see Nike 40% of off, off of all the product. Um, you can see other deals with Adidas where you know, the, the discounts are different. 30% off uniforms. Um, and, and so there's there, the bottom line is there's market variability, and when you have this type of data, uh, you're in a great position to be able to maximize incremental revenue for your department. So, so guarantees and vendors, two significant opportunities to use data to your advantage. And as a sidebar here, we only provide this service to NCAA administrators. We don't sell it to coaches who might nego use it to negotiate against you. We don't sell it to Adidas. We don't sell it to Coke or Sodexo. It waters down the value if everyone has this expansive of a data set. Uh, instead, we've, we've consciously chosen uh, to to exclude that portion of the market, which is gonna which is gonna help uh, provide the data exclusively to administrators and ultimately give you the negotiating advantage. Let's take a look at the coaches database here. All right, so we're now taking a look at the Division II Coaches Database. As we alluded to at the top of the webinar, this database contains uh, 8,000 Division II coaches, head and assistants in every men's and women's sport, including support staff like strength and conditioning, trainers, video coordinators. And what this data set does, well, among the many things that it does, is it gives you a much broader view of the market. Uh, it, it expands how you benchmark salary uh, for your coaches and staff from maybe a, a limited conference survey uh, or, or picking up the phone to call peers to get data to, to now overnight you have access to thousands of coaches all across the country in every sport where you can do salary comparisons uh, and, and certainly that is from kind of looking at it from a financial standpoint. The other thing it does is it does is it opens up the entire NCAA talent pool for your evaluation. And so we'll we'll look at some of the examples of ways you can use this over the next few minutes. But we'll just start by taking a look at the idea that or the fact that Win AD for each coach is going to give you what I call a coach profile card. And you can see on this coach profile card you have. Uh, all the salary data. We've, we've, we've literally read the contract and pulled out the key data for you. So you got total comp, you got base, you got contingent bonus potential. If, if, the, if the coach gets some additional employment perks like cars or country club memberships, we're going to display that information you know, right there on the profile card. And if you want to take a look at the current executed agreement, you know it's a mouse click away. You click on the agreement link or the PDF link at the bottom of the profile card, and you know in this case here's Lonnie Blow's contract uh, right down to the executed signature. And so, you know if you haven't already, begin thinking about who else in your institution, in and around athletics, may also benefit from this data. Think about your general counsel, the folks that design your contract templates. Think about your, your human resources folks that do compensation analysis. Think about that VP of finance that oversees the concessions deal and the vendors database we were just looking at. We can provide as many user logins as you need uh, when you sign up for WinAD. So if that means there's five in athletics and, and each, each of the five has their own unique login, and then we provide two to HR, then two to the campus finance office, you know, again, we'll provide as many user logins as you need. And by the way, all of those folks could potentially represent funding partners for this project, for this spend. So we're seeing a lot of that nowadays. There's a lot of schools that are going to those other constituent groups, getting support for the spend, getting funding, and, and using the information to, the, to their advantage thereafter. 
Uh, for any coach that you want to take a closer look at, let's do Jim Savavota here at, at Central Missouri, you can click on a coach's name, and when you do that, we drill down uh, to a coach profile page for this particular coach. And the first thing you'll notice is a video library for this coach. We have built a way uh, to harvest automatically YouTube content for coaches and administrators uh, as it's created. And so think pre- and post-game interviews, press conferences, mic'd up practices. This allows you to see a coach, hear them in their own words, pass a visual eye test, if you will, to ensure that a coach that you may think about hiring uh, fits the culture that's established at your institution. Uh, we, again, we talk about the theme of this webinar is, is cutting costs and, and increasing revenue. When you can go out and you can make the most informed hiring decisions possible uh, and, and really do your due diligence using WinAD, uh, you can decrease the risk of churn uh, and you can make better hires with better data, increasing long-term retention and therefore cutting costs. We've heard countless stories from clients uh, about how they're making better hires with this data. And then on the right side, you have just a snapshot. So you got base, you got total. If there's any buyout information, we'll show that. Uh, as always, you have a link to the current PDF contract uh, here as well. And you can see if we scroll down, here's Jim Svoboda's contract, second addendum. So again, we're going out and collecting uh, not only the original agreements, but we're collecting the other, other agreements as well. Subsequent to the original agreement, you can see assistant coaching pool spend here at a glance. You can see how other programs are allocating resources to their football team. If we go up here to the top, you can see uh, I just clicked on a compensation tab. You got the uh, contact information for this coach at the top of the screen, link to the school bio. Here on the compensation tab, you'll see a three-year trend line showing his salary relative to the conference average. We'll show you a pie chart if there are any different pieces of the pie that the coach is getting. We'll show you that. Again, you have outside income reports. You have the old contracts, new contracts, top right of the screen there. A list of assistants. Assistant coaching pool spend here at the bottom right. As you can see, the data is 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 significant. There's a huge amount of information here uh, to allow you to, to to benchmark yourself against other programs to justify the investment that you're making in your program. Here's what Central Missouri is doing. Here's what we need to compete in terms of investment if that's who we want to be in three to five years. Um, in the center of the screen, you'll see that we take the contract and we extrapolate it out over the life of the deal. So if, if a coach is getting you know, a pay bump every few years, if they're getting a deferred compensation payment, that information will show up here. So inherently, this is better than a survey. Uh, a survey is a snapshot in time, whereas 1AD is a continuously updated system uh, that, shows you, that shows you current comp, copies of contracts, uh, and really granular detail in the in the compensation of a, of any given coach in a particular sport. And then as you scroll down, you can see you have instant benchmarking. So here are the other coaches in the MIAA. Here are the highest paid football coaches in Division Two. Uh, and then on the right side, you got a cost of living adjusted salary. So I graduated from UNC Wilmington. When I log in, it shows me Wilmington, North Carolina dollars for you in the webinar audience wherever your locale is. When you log in, it will show you you know Fargo, North Dakota. Uh, uh, you know, Tampa Bay, Florida, whatever the case may be, we'll, we'll automatically recognize when you log in what your city is. And what this tells me is if is if is if Jim Savoda is making 126 in Central Missouri, and I was going to move him to Wilmington, I would actually need to pay him 128 to exactly equal his current standard of living. Top of the screen, you got a record tab. You can see a coach's record going back at least five years if they've been around that long in Division Two. You got RPI, he's because he spent a little time in Division One. Uh, you got APR. We're actually in the process right now of updating to show ASR for Division Two. And then a, a really cool tab that we have here uh, is coworker history. Uh, this is a visualized family tree for this coach. You can see at the top, here are the assistants he's worked with during his time at Central Missouri. Below that, here are the administrators, senior staff, the folks he's worked with during his time at Central Missouri. Uh, going back even further at previous career stops, he was an assistant head coach at, at Montana State from 07 to 2010. Here are all the coaches he worked with during that time. Back to his days at UCLA, here are the coaches he's worked with then administrators. And so what we've done is you know because we have the the career history 
for for these coaches going back several years. We've tied it all together to give you a consolidated view of any given coach or administrator. The same functionality is also available in administrators. Uh, their professional network. So, you, you know, maybe you have a coach that you respect the way they, they teach the game and you want to hire a coach from that uh, particular coach's family tree. Uh, maybe you want to start uh, doing a little research and you want to look at, you know, administrators that you may know. Maybe you know Mr. Jerry Hughes or Sean Jones and you want to call those particular folks to find out what they can tell you about certain coaches because you know they're in the same network. So it's, a, it's just a great way uh, to explore potential hires and to, to kind of research uh, other coaches and administrators' professional networks. So you can see here on the on the coach profile pages from compensation to record to coworker history to the overview tab where we're showing you videos. WinAD really offers you everything you would need to evaluate a coach, make an informed hiring decision. Uh, now let's talk about some other use cases with this coaching data. I think one of the obvious ones is active search. So again, how do you save time? How do you save money with WinAD? Uh, time savings is a big component when you think about going out and finding a coach because active search is a labor-intensive process. It takes time. With WinAD, if you want to find a, a women's volleyball coach, for example, you can come in and you can select the women's volleyball from the sport drop-down. You can obviously choose conference or individual school if you want to do some benchmarking. In this case, let's look at uh, head coaches. So we'll look in our position drop-down for head coaches. You can also see sports-specific titles like D coordinator. In this case, we'll choose a head coach. We want to find somebody who's making less than, you know, we'll set the number high, 90K. Uh, you can look for diverse or non-Caucasian candidates here. Uh, and, and, and in this case, we'll look for a female candidate. You can look by region, uh, U.S. Census grouping, so region of the country, alma mater. Uh, you can look by when the contract expires. And maybe, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, we're doing this webinar at the, at the uh, beginning of most folks' new fiscal year. So maybe you want to look for a coach whose contract just expired because you don't want to have to worry about a buyout coming into, into play here. And so you enter in all those parameters, you click update, and there's every women's volleyball coach in Division Two that exactly uh, meets your criteria. And so you just send a national search in about six or eight mouse clicks, about 10 seconds. And then once you've created that subgroup, uh, you can then sort it. So you can sort it by record high to low. You can sort it by comp. Uh, high to low. So we'll click comp, it'll go low to high first. We'll click it again, it'll go high to low. And so, uh, you, you know, within this subset that you've just created, you can sort it any way you want to. Maybe you sort by record and, and, and find the, the, the best coach who's uh, maybe, maybe underpaid and fi find high value coaches. The other thing that you can do here in the coaches database specifically is benchmarking, right? So we can, we can back out a couple of these, uh, you know, parameters down here. And, and maybe you just simply want to look at women's basketball uh, head coaches in Division Two, And so you can see we have women's basketball, D2, head coaches, and click Update. And then we'll sort the list. And so as we think about, you know, coming back to the main theme of the webinar today, cutting costs, uh, increasing revenue, I think this probably falls into the cutting cost bucket. I've heard countless stories from clients about how they were able to retain key staff members by quickly and easily benchmarking salary and win AD and, and maybe being able to go to their administration and saying, look, we're, we're below market right now. If you want to keep this coach, here's what we need to pay. Uh, maybe, you know, there's a lot of D2 schools that are in a situation where, you know, we're going to pay what we're going to pay. It doesn't really matter what anybody else is going to pay. That's okay, too, uh, because what this data can, can still help you do, even in that situation, is simply manage your own coach's expectations. You can get in here and you can say, look, here are, in four mouse clicks, all of the women's basketball coaches in Division Two sorted high to low. And guess what, Coach? You're actually a lot closer to the top than you anticipated. And so it's a way to manage your own coach's expectations, to reset that conversation that you may have with coaches uh, about where they stand relative to peers, retain your coach, which is going to save you money, it's going to save you time, uh, and, and ultimately it's just going to give you the best data uh, possible when you encounter those types of situations. So there's the coaches database, uh, very expansive data set there. Again, it's updated continuously throughout the year uh, to give you to give you the best compensation data available anywhere. Next, let's take a look at our NCAA financials database, and and this is a database of exactly what it sounds like. It's NCAA financial report data. 
Uh, it's not the EADA data, and you can see at the top of the screen that you can kind of toggle back and forth between revenues and expense data here. And on the expense side, you can see things like student aid and you know recruiting and travel. On the revenue side, you got you know student fees, institutional support, ticket sales. This is the thirty thousand foot view, uh, and you can sort any of these columns. So so imagine going across campus. To, to a board of trustees hearing where you get, you're going to make the case that you need to increase your student fee revenue. And with WinAD and, and, and three mouse clicks, you're now looking at Division II sorted high to low in, in student fee revenue. Uh, that is the type of, uh, of broader data set uh, and, and more expansive set of reference information that can make or break those type of discussions. Uh, when you can go in there and you can say, look, here are, here's our peer group. Here's what we're getting in terms of institutional support uh, relative to our peer group. You know, there's institutional support in Division II sorted high to low. Uh, if you want to, you can come into the financials database and create peer groups, conferences. Financials here is cool because you can create your own custom parameters. Maybe you want to look for schools that have total revenue of between two and four million. Uh, 2.2 million and 4.8 million. You know, you can you can put in any information you want to there. It's totally customizable. Maybe you want to look for schools who have student fees of at least 2 million. Uh, then then you can certainly do that in this case, uh, and, and you can put in your own parameters. Whatever data is important to you, you can input into the system there. Uh, in this case, let's just drill down a little bit deep here, and let's look at a school like Michigan Tech. And you know, when you click on a school their name just like the other databases you've seen thus far we're gonna drill deeper you know and so I've clicked on Michigan Tech and back up at the top of the screen here you can see we're now looking at a page specific for Michigan Tech uh, you can see their student enrollment student athletes number of sports you have revenues on the top half of the page broken down by revenue sport football men's women's basketball other in total and then the expenses on the bottom half of the page so so we've kind of gone a little deeper here, a little more granular. We're now breaking it down by sport, and and obviously what's great is you have access to the to the actual NCAA report here. In addition to the NCAA report, we also get third-party audited financial statements where they're available. 501c3 athletic departments have to fill those out. We get those as well, just to give you another data set. What's great about the source document? You may not care about what Michigan Tech spends on student aid because your tuitions are different, but if you're doing a competitive benchmark, you do care about what they spend on scholarship equivalencies and that's encompassed right here on uh, page 13 of the NCAA report. What's also nice here in this database is that you can continue to drill deeper. So if you look at something like recruiting for example and you click on recruiting we're now going to show you by sport what Michigan Tech is spending on recruiting. So for every sport they carry. So 83,000 on, on men's ice hockey recruiting. 4,900 on men's soccer. So what's great about the financials database here is that you can choose your own custom parameters. You can you can click on a school and drill all the way down to sport level and to get some really granular data. Uh, and, and again, you think about managing coaches' expectations. Think about setting your budgets and having those meetings with your coaches where you say, look, those schools you're competing against, here's how they're allocating resources. Here's their investment levels, and here's why we're already competitive in those ways. Maybe you use this data to go to that uh, meeting across, across campus where you're going to talk to them about you know, what the reality of the competitive landscape is. At the end of the day, you need good information when AD delivers it. Now, we had some folks coming to us and saying, hey, we want a more holistic view of a school like Michigan Tech. We want to see these numbers in context. And so what we did is we built athletic department profile pages that you can get to here, uh, or you can click on Michigan Tech, and we'll bounce over to a page that's going to be specific for Michigan Tech where we show you, again, just more of a broad view of the, of the department. You can choose other departments as well. So if you want to come in here and you want to, you know, choose, you know, Pittsburgh State, for example. You choose Pittsburgh State, we'll bounce over and we'll show you Pittsburgh State's uh, profile page. So you can see navigation is very easy. Here's the senior staff at, at, at Pittsburgh State. Compensation, titles all right here. As we scroll down, this is where that context comes into play. You have a four-year revenue and expense trend line for Pitt State. What's leveling off? What's increasing? How do we keep up? What's the landscape look like? All of that information is right here. And as we because as we scroll down, you can see that we break down revenues again, major categories for revenues, major categories for expenses, 
over the last four years with a percentage change indicator from last fiscal year to this fiscal year. So immediately at a glance you can see how are our ticket sales looking relative to peers. You, you know, how are their investment in recruiting, uh, how does that vary from ours? You, maybe you use this to look at aspirational programs, programs that where you know where you want to be in three to five years, and you can see how they're 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 allocating resources and how they're investing. Uh, all right here, as you scroll down, you have vendor deals. So here's Pitt State's vendor deals. Uh, here's any guarantee games that they may have access to the contracts. So these department profiles just provide a very succinct. Uh, very concise view of a department obviously great for benchmarking and then we just allow you to go deeper so maybe you want to look at a, a sport profile page and you can see all the revenue and non-revenue sports here so when we click on a sport like women's softball for example you got the head and assistant coaches here you got record over the last few years here's an indication of the coaches over the last few years assistant coaching pool spend and then all of the data that you'll see below this is going to be specific to women's softball. So you can see revenues and expenses over the last few years, four years for women's softball, and then broken down by categories. So whether you're benchmarking an entire department, uh, whether you're benchmarking individual sports, WinAD's got you covered. We're going to allow you to drill down and look at that information in a really succinct way uh, and, and just give you the give you the the, a, a kind of a great view of the information whether you're whether you're managing expectations doing your research doing your planning or, or justifying expenditures the the last module to take a look at here uh, well I, I've, I, let me let me take let's take a look at administrators and if I go back to the department profile for Pitt State we'll, we'll stay pretty short and sweet here on administrators if you get coaches you get administrators it's the exact same layout uh, we're going to show you videos. Here's Jim Johnson. We're going to show you contact info. We're going to show you coworker history, who's he, who he's worked with, a copy of the current contract, compensation breakdowns. And so all that data layout is very similar or, or nearly the same for administrators as it is uh, coaches. Instead of looking for head and assistant coaches in our administrators database, you can look for uh, SWAs and deputies. And so uh, uh, all of the expansive information you want to look for about administrators in there, nearly 2,000 administrators, senior staff members in Division Two, are going to be in that administrators database. And then the last module is uh, this benchmark tool. And so benchmark kind of brings it all together. We did, we did an example earlier where we talked about recruiting. And so if we come out here to the right side, you can click on benchmark, and we'll benchmark recruiting. And let me clear these other schools out here, and let's take a look at – what we have. So you got Pitt State on the same line again with my school, UNC Wilmington, and maybe we we want to choose some other schools to put on here. So we want to look at, uh, you know, we want to look at let's let's choose another MIAA school, Northwest uh, Missouri State. So we'll we'll choose Northwest Missouri State and uh, and and click Add School, and now Northwest Missouri State is is on the school, uh, is on the same the same chart. Let's look at uh, some 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 folks maybe on the West Coast, Cal Tech Pomona. And so we'll, we'll add Pomona to the list here as well. And then you want to come back in and you want to add, um, you know, Ch Cal State Chico, for example. And so you get the idea. You can add any uh, school that you want to. Maybe they're in your region. Uh, maybe they are uh, Maybe they are a part of a, an analysis you want to do that includes some conference schools and then some other peers, you know, in other regions. You can choose your own custom group of schools, and then at the top of the screen, we're going to show you what you're seeing. So you're, right now you're seeing a four-year trend for recruiting budgets for the entire athletic department. But what if you want to look at recruiting budgets for a sport specifically, like men's basketball? Well, you select men's basketball, you click Update, and we'll show you the four-year trend for men's basketball across those four schools. And then what's great is you can choose any revenue or expense data points. So here's revenues. you got ticket sales. You got things like student fees. So again, back to our example earlier, imagine going across campus and saying, "Look, uh, here here's the student fee revenue of the schools that you expect us to compete against. Here's how their programs are being supported uh, by students and by the university." Uh, and so you can you can take this data, you can drop it into a PowerPoint, you can drop it into an email, uh, or, or maybe you want to look at you know things like travel expenses. And so we can go down on the bottom half of the page and look at travel expenses. And so e e either way, what you're looking at here is in the benchmark module is a way to create the schools, a group of schools that that you want to benchmark, and then and then really kind of unleash the horsepower or or give you the freedom 
to choose the data that, that you want to see uh, on this analysis. And so the benchmark tool is a lot of flexibility, a lot of great data, trending information in context uh, brought to you by WinAD. So we looked at some specific examples today of opportunities to increase revenue. Certainly guarantees is a way to do that by knowing the right number to ask for when you have uh, market transparency in the guarantees area when you have it in uh, vendors when you're negotiating that pouring rights deal it changes the dynamic of the conversation when you can sit down and you can tell the other party whether it be coke or another school in a guarantee game negotiation uh, you know exactly what their last three or four contracts look like uh, it's, it's, a, it's a game changing piece of information for you to have absolutely uh, a way to increase incremental revenue uh, and certainly pay for your WinAD subscription. And then and, and like on the cost saving side, you certainly think about guar scheduling guarantee home games. You think about retaining top talent. You think about retaining uh, leaders within your athletic administrative staff uh, by knowing nationally what the salary trends are, being able to set and effectively manage expectations. And you know, on the financial piece, uh, obviously it's really just about getting the best data you can uh, to make the most informed decisions, seeing trends, uh, being able to justify how you're investing and managing your department. When AD, uh, the mission back in 2009 still rings true today. We're going to give you the best data to be able to make the best decisions, uh, and we're only going to do it with, with ADs, and we're only going to partner with athletic administrators. Uh, I'm going to throw my contact information up on the screen here. I want to say thank you. It was a, it was a pleasure uh, to have the opportunity to – uh, to do the webinar today. I appreciate everyone for joining. Uh, if you have questions or would like to learn more about the WinAD database, I would certainly encourage you to reach out to uh, me using the information on the screen. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to set up a, maybe a, a, a custom webinar where we could explore specific use cases for your institution. But I hope you have a great rest of the afternoon, uh, and we'll look forward to talking with you soon. Thank you.